What we do here is go back, 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 back. Alright, what's up guys? So today we have the mini effects stencil and again I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. We'll see what it looks like, how it comes, and uh, I'll go and I'll give you guys a quick demonstration of how to use it and the many ways uh, this actually has lots of uses. So I'll show you guys a quick little example of, of each and yeah. So anyway, uh, Thank you again for watching this video. Thank you again for your order, if you place an order for one of these. Uh, but let's go ahead and open her up and see what comes in here. Alrighty, so our stencils come in a nice packaging like this. The packaging is meant to be reused to store your stencils. So you could easily just open it up on one side. Like this. Pour your stencil contents out, bam, and then when you're done using your stencil, you just reopen it, put it back in, uh, but for now we're going to set this aside so we have it for when we need to put our stencils back. So in this stencil kit, you get uh, scales, you get a carbon fiber slash flag slash whatever else you may need squares for. This is probably one of the most hardest to cut things. Uh, so far on the website is this actual uh, squares keeping those other squares in there without losing the strength of it is actually really hard um, we have our hexagon pattern uh, so this is like a honeycomb pattern uh, this is really handy for a lot of stuff I've used this on just about everything so in this it's just a, a small piece again this is the mini effects but obviously just layering it you can do you know, if you have a graphic laid out and you just boom, 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 just move it down and you'll be good to go. You get a spider web kit. So this is just a really simple, basic uh, spider web. But again, for doing graphics uh, like RC bodies, uh, motorcycle helmets, shoes, stuff like that, anything where you have something taped off um, and you just want to give it a quick little spider effect, maybe you're doing some Spider-Man shoes, whatever the case, um, this is a super easy way to get it done. And then we have a jungle camo kit so this is something uh, that can be used obviously to create a, a <laughs> why do I keep wanting to say jangle <laughs> a jungle camo effect uh, like a regular old-school camouflage um, effect so you would layer this in uh, over a, you know even this color here looks pretty good but if you layer it in a green and then you shifted it or reversed it, laid it in some brown, and then maybe you tape some of the areas off, and then just lay in some black, and uh, you'll get a good camouflage kit um, with that. Again, it's smaller sized, so it's meant to be used on small stuff like RC bodies, helmets, something like that, something where you just want to throw in a little bit of a, a camouflage type of effect. Um, this is a good way to do it. Also, you can obviously use this for creating uh, just various effects in, in any painting. Um, and I'll, again, we'll go ahead and do a quick demonstration. But in the kit, you get all five of these um, for one low price, right? So it's pretty good. And like I said, this right here, oh my God, this is like the hardest thing to cut. And you can see it's actually pretty strong in there. Um, and yeah, and all our stencils again, if you haven't already noticed, they are 6 mil mylar on one side, so they are shiny on one side, right? And on the other side, it's a paper um, side. So the paper side is kind of, of absorbent. It's semi-absorbent. So if you're spraying with like reduced paints or something like that, um, heavily reduced paints, the paper helps absorb some of that. So while you're doing your spraying, you don't get a, a wet buildup on the edge of the stencil, uh, causing a stain on your surface or anything like that. Um, this kind of helps to mitigate that just a little bit. And of course, the mylar is uh, the actual stencil, and it's really tough 
a mylar at six mil. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's set up a canvas and we'll give you guys a quick little demo. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. Got a canvas here. And I'll apologize ahead of time if you hear the compressor run because I have it right underneath my feet today because I need to actually load it up right after the stream because we're going to be going to paint somewhere and I will be using that compressor so we kind of have it ready to load up. So what's up James Melton? What's up Stephen Ward? How's it going? Uh, DLM, how's it going? Um, so yeah. I'll go ahead and just tape off an area and we'll just kind of go down um, down the list here of effects. I'll give you guys a quick little demo. I'll keep it simple. We'll try to use just gray and black again just for demonstration purposes. Um, but obviously once you start throwing in colors and pearls and you know using your imagination a little bit, um, you know, you can achieve achieve greatness. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we'll start with the most simplest one, which is obviously the spider stencil here. And uh, again, you know, this is just a, a really basic demo, but I'll just add another tape line here just to, so we can simulate some graphics here. Like we got our graphic lined out here and we just want to throw some stencils, uh, some Spider-Man, you know, effect in the background so it's not empty. And we're going to use our spider stencil here. So I'm just going to load up a little bit of gray. We'll start with gray today. So I'm just going to hold this in place and we'll start right there. Make sure it doesn't move. If, if you have a trouble holding it in place, right? It's real easy. If you want to save yourself the trouble, you want to make sure you don't get any mistakes. Just use a piece of tape. Bam. And you don't need a huge piece of tape. Just use something to tack it down with. Bam. And look at that now now both your hands are free and you could just go over the stencil and make sure we get all those little edges now Pro tip, one thing I've learned to do over the time is maybe do some texture in those areas. You know, you don't have to leave them empty. So maybe you could bring some, just some texture around, just some freehand dots or whatever it is. Just bring them around, but don't go too far over the edge. So what we're gonna do is just move this bad boy over. And we'll put it like right there, just so it's overlapping just a little bit. And then we're going to be careful here, and we're just going to hit those, that little center part of there. Boom. And then hit the edges over here. And now bring in some more of that little texture there. Put that guy off. Right, and then you, you can layer it in so you have that other web coming in behind that web. And if you have multiple ones, if honestly, if the, the Webmaster Kit, because it comes with all the sets, you can layer it so good, but you could kind of achieve the same thing with just one. Um, and then all we're going to do is just shade it in from the side. And then we'll just reinforce the edge with some black, just to give it some depth.
And there's the compressor. It should only run for a second. <clears throat> load up a little bit of black there I'm just gonna hit that edge and pretty standard on the web but pretty handy a lot of times I've used this on a lot of designs um, and yeah it just having it handy is super super nice so then we'll just go ahead and leave our tape here and we'll move down the line now the honeycomb pattern is uh, again it's just pretty I mean, I don't know. and these are all just kind of uh, ways of achieving a certain effect so the honeycomb pattern is kind of the same We'll let up some gray. I, 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 just, I don't I I don't it's a matter of how do I simplify it more simple than it is and I can't. Like I don't need to use words because I could just come in and spray the pattern. And again, if you're looking to fill some areas like on some shoes, on some graphics, on you know, whatever you're working on take this bad boy and then you can just move it down the line be careful with your edge more careful than I was so you don't get overspray over the edge and we'll do one last little bit right there Boom. But it pretty much takes all the guesswork out of it, right? You just lay that in, and there you go. Like, your your pattern is looking sweet. Look a sweet, baby. And we'll just reinforce that edge again with some black. And again, these are all great um, also for, like, shirts. So I know a lot of times I'll do a name, and always you're looking for a way to do a cool effect in the background, right? These are a great way of just adding a cool effect real quick in the back, just like that. Bam. Oh, jeez, the chat's been going nuts. Um, let me go back here. What's up, Jesus? What's up, Blue? How's it going? Um, <laughs> Blue, thank you for the $10. Thank you, thank you so much. What's up, Dennis Blaze? How's it going? Reason my nickname is Fings Chopped Off. Chopped three off on my right hand. No! No, sir! Do not tell me these things. That is like nightmare, nightmare material right there. <laughs> Your order is uh, complete, Dennis. Uh, it'll be going out on Monday. So... Thank you again, sir. So there you go. You got the, you get the spider pattern, spider web. You get the honeycomb pattern. Um, <clears throat> the jungle camo. So we'll do the jungle camo next. And again, I'll just start off with some gray and I'm gonna use some tape here just to hold it in place. And blue, you asked last time about the spray adhesive on the stencils. And you asked about mineral spirits, I think it was. And I do believe you can use mineral spirits to wipe off the plastic side. Obviously on the paper side, the paper's gonna get mushy and, and stuff, but you can what you can do too is soak them just leave them soaking in water it's the paper side's going to come off obviously because it's paper but if you really want to get them clean and, or if you just want the mylar and no paper you could just soak them in water um, leave them soaking overnight it's not really going to hurt the stencil at all um, and then the next day you know just 
take the paper off, just rub it off, clean it with a brush, and uh, your stencil will be pretty much just the mylar. So I'm just going and hidden in our camouflage pattern with some gray. Just making sure to get all the gray in there. Um, we'll move it over to the next area. We'll try to connect some of that there at the end. recommend doing <clears throat> a color so we're going to throw in some black with it going the other way now normally I would recommend doing like three colors right so you would do one color going one way flip it do the other color doing the next way and then cover some of these up like maybe just go around and cover up some of the patterns with some tape and then do your third color and that way you get the most variation out of this just one stencil right so hopefully you heard me over that but in case you didn't I would normally recommend that you use three colors for something like this. We're just going to do two today. But I would say do your gray and then do like, you know, a lot of people do like red or blue. Or you could just do a more medium gray or darker gray or a brown, right? And do the, the brown with the flipped. And then go back and cover some of those up and then maybe do it standing up and do the black, right? For today, we're just going to do gray and black, just to show you guys a quick example. go and then again I'm just gonna go back with the black and just hit that edge right there and I wish I would have hit the gray just a little darker just so it stood out a little more but that looks pretty good in its own um, did I miss oh yeah Dennis how's it going how did that happen? Woodworking? Oh, yeah. How did you get your fingers chopped? Um, don't forget to hit that like button. Yeah, thank you, thank you. How many gallons is your tank? So this this compressor right here, I could just point the camera down to show you which compressor I'm using and which compressor I'll be using tonight. This is not this. What's connected to it is not what I'm going to be using, but... The rest of it is, and hopefully we get the camera down far enough. There you go. So this is the Makita Quiet Series. Here, I'll get to focus in. The Mac 20, 210Q, that's what this is. One horsepower, two CFM at 90 PSI. So I always talk about you guys about checking the CFM and making sure it's going to recharge quick enough. So this, the reason this charge recharges so quick is because that's why. Is the CFM is pretty good. And I've been using this for a lot of events and stuff. This is what we use for the live streams, but it usually sits in that room over there. Um, so you, it's not so loud. Um, i just making sure today that everything's going to work and uh, made sure to clean it up and everything. So for the event today, to make sure to get it ready. So, yeah, that's what we're using today. And uh, I feel like I need to make another video about all the compressors again because uh, the comp 
compressors keep changing. <laughs> well, not really. It's uh, it's the same. I guess it's the same kind of. We just have some new ones. Um, all right, and then we'll move on to the next one here. Next effect. But yeah, this little compressor right here, uh, running at about 40 PSI, which is what I do at like events for shirts and stuff. Um, it doesn't recharge all that often. Um, it works pretty good, and it's it's ran me through some pretty long events without overheating or anything crazy like that. And that's usually the problem with smaller compressors is that once you know they work great, but it, it, once you push it push it to the limit. You know, they, they, they're they not so happy so much anymore. Um, so that is a thing to keep in mind. <laughs> Again, I'm just going to use a little bit of tape here. And we're going to start with gray. Wait, I'm going to show you guys. Let me show you something. All right, so we're going to start with some gray here. And, oh man, I wish... Let me show you a trick. With this particular one, I guess you could do it with the other ones too, but I'm, with this particular one, I'm going to show you something. I'll just take a piece of paper here. That's the easiest way. All right, we're gonna take a piece of paper. We're gonna lay it here. We're gonna spray just some gray. Nothing crazy. I'm just gonna spray this edge right here, just to mark it off. Right, boom. Gonna take our paper here. We're gonna cut this out. Right, I'm gonna just cut it out real quick with a blade. Take a blade, cut this out, and uh, in order to get the most out of your scale stencil, I don't think a lot of people realize when you get one like this, um, it's really cool because of the way you can use it. Right, so we'll take this guy here, which we just did real quick. So if it's not perfect, don't don't yell at me. All right, we're gonna. Set this little guy aside. We're going to need that, though. So then we're just going to hit in some gray right here. We're going to kind of just be a little bit liberal with it. I always, you know, if you want to lay in some texture using your stencil, you could also do that. Just lay some lines in. All right, then we're going to move this guy. Actually, no, we don't have to move it just yet. I'll just show you. We're going to load up the black. I'm going to put this guy back into place so we don't have to move it yet. We could actually get this all done before we move. Right, now we're going to grab our black. Right, then we're going to line this up with our scales and we're going to block off the first set. And now we're just going to hit the inside of the scale. Go to the next one. Block off the inside. And we're just going to hit those little... See the inside point. You can use your stencil to make a masking stencil. I'll just keep moving down the line. Right, hopefully, you can see what I'm doing there. So now you got all those points. See all the little points? How they're nice and dark, but then all the edges of the actual scale are nice and bright. So you just move this guy down here. And then you can move this. Line it up right there. Tap it down. Oh my gosh, so many.
Oh my gosh, you gotta find gloves that fit. Oh, <laughs> at least you you can have a good spirits about it. That's good. Um, what is it here? Uh, would these stencils would be good for RC cars? Yeah, I've said that already multiple times. It's really gonna depend on the size of the RC and what you're trying to achieve, but. That's kind of the, the purpose of these, is to provide some smaller kits, right? So you can use them in smaller areas. And a lot of these are sized for smaller stuff, like helmets, like RC bodies, like shoes, um, cell phone cases, anything like that that's smaller, and you just need a smaller stencil set. Um, this particular kit will give you a nice variety to use with that set. Um, but like with any stencils, you're really going to want to go and look um, and make sure it fits your appropriate projects. Um, you know, stencils are not one size fits all. Even though I do try to make mine pretty, like I try to make them multi-purpose so that you could get the most use out of them. But of course... Not every stencil is going to work for every project. And sometimes, even though you have the stencil, you'll feel like it's maybe too big or too small, or whatever the case is. But, I think I've said this before, my stencils are aimed, uh, you know, obviously for beginners, and for those just looking to have a nice little stencil arsenal for their various projects. But, you know, they're only meant to get you so far. And then from there, I, I feel like most people um, end up making or creating or getting a machine to where they could uh, make stencils themselves. Or they end up hand cutting them, you know, by hand. Whatever the case may be. You know, but my stencils, I try, I do try to make them to where they are going to get you to the point where you can get yourself a machine. You know, or uh, provide the most use out of them. And there's the scales. Oh, yeah. Last but not least, we'll do the carbon fiber slash flag, whatever you want to call it, this piece right here. And again, this is about as hard as a cut you can get without ripping it. Like, yeah. <laughs> but this is amazing. This you could use for a lot of stuff, just in general. Um, so I'll show you guys real quick. We'll do a quick look. So on our C cars, you're always doing graphics, and I'll go ahead and let me lay another tape here. Right, you're always doing graphics, and for me at least, a lot of people always ask for like they want a racing flag, right? So this, if you start off your body, you know it's not a complete racing flag. Obviously, it's not. But you can lay this in. Fade it up. Bam. Then you got that checkered race flag look. And all you gotta do is come in, add some little effects around it, some shading. And there you go. You got your race flag graphic. Right? Um, I, when you're doing something on black, Right. Uh, obviously, we have a white panel, but if you're working on something black um, and you do silver, right? So it's kind of tricky. It's not the easiest to do, but if you come in and you just lay silver, like alternating edges, like you go see how I hit this edge, then I'll skip that middle one. Go one more, skip the middle one, go one more. And do that. Again, using silver, like a, a pearlescent silver, over black. 
right? And you'll get that, you see that carbon fiber look already kind of, it happens on this too, so. And then this is, you just kind of go. And it's a super duper, super duper easy way of getting that look without having to work so hard for it. There you go. There you have your effects. I'll zoom you guys in so you can get a good look. Of all of them, and we'll start right here. All right. And you have the spider effects. You got the honeycomb. You get a jungle camo effect. You get some scales. Which again, a lot of people will ask why the middle part. So you, whatever, like say you're painting a dragon or you have a graphic laid out, that middle part, like if you have, want a red dragon, you lay down red first, then you use the stencil using, you know, a darker red, maybe a maroon or a purple, and then you do some, you know, really dark, like blue or something for the dark, like the, the sh shade, shadow in there, the shadow. Um, then you could get like a really cool skin of the, the, you know, of the reptile or whatever it is you're painting, um, because that won't be white. It'll be a, the actual color of the skin, right? So then you get the carbon fiber and slash racing flag look. So you could create an erasing flag look right away. And then again, even though this is just black on white, um, if you do, if you're painting over black, or on our RC body, you would start with the silver, right? You lay this in, do your silver, you know, edge to edge, and then go back and spray black, you know, as a backer, and you would get a cool carbon fiber effect like this. Um, super easy. Or a weaving effect, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a super easy way of getting that in there. Um, and so a lot of people have asked how you actually use those those mini effects and what they'd be good for. I know a lot of people have been asking for RC stencils for a while. And this is about as close to an RC kit uh, as we have. It's Again, it's not... I'm not... like I'm, It's a multi-use kit because it could obviously be used for helmets, for shoes, for a lot of stuff. Um, not just RC bodies. But if you're looking for something to use on RC bodies, this is definitely the kit that I would recommend. Um, and it is called the mini effects kit on the mikesbrush.com website it comes with all five of these um, stencils for you to use and like I've said they are six mil mylar on the back they are paper fronted on the front and the reason for the paper is uh, if you're spraying uh, like reduced paints or just wet paints or anything just spraying in general the paper is absorbent, right? So it helps kind of absorb some of that wetness so you don't get a wet buildup on the edge and then mistakenly, you know, get a smudge on your surface or, or what you're working on uh, because, you know, just that wetness built up on the edge and you weren't paying attention. It happens to me. It happens to everybody. Um, and whenever you're working with stencils, it's something that can happen. And that's kind of why we've decided to go with the paper front. Um, with the plastic back and again it comes in a nice container and you can just get them we're finished using them right so we'll just take them put them back in here look at that nice and nice and easy boom and you're good to go for next time so as anyways guys um Thank you guys again all for watching. If you place an order for one of these, I really do appreciate your order. Every order helps the channel bring you more videos like this. We have um, quite a few more stencils left to go. There's a stack, stack of them back there. 
that we still have left to go through. There's been orders coming in, so I really do appreciate it. You guys have been going ham on the order thing. The laser has been going nonstop. Um, so it's it's been pretty amazing. I, I thank you guys again for all the support. Um, and if you, again, if you do take care of these, you will only have to order them once. Like, you know, I don't see, unless you're like really rough with stuff, like if you're just ripping at it or something, I don't know why you would, um, you know, they should last you pretty much a lifetime, so. Again, that's all I got for you guys today. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys again for all your orders. Um, appreciate all your support. Thank you guys again for hanging out today in the chat. It's always awesome hanging out with you guys. And uh, I gotta get, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get some of this stuff actually cleaned up and loaded up, and get ready to head out. We gotta drive out like three hours or something. So, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. We'll be back in a couple days, uh, Monday. Um, for you guys so keep an eye out for that and we'll see you guys in the next one later later everybody